My name is Bishop Adam Zilla. I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I'm staying in Johannesburg, South Africa. When it comes to the unemployment, uh, what I can say is uh, it's, a, it's a broader subject that affects even the citizens of South Africa. So it's not something that is limited to the youth, to the youth who are migrants. However, it has a bigger impact when it comes to someone who is uh, a migrant. Why do I say so? Because when someone comes from, um, from another country, they suffer uh, the consequences of uh, being, you know, sometimes undocumented uh, and being not a first priority in industry. Uh, because sometimes, you know, it's a matter of we are and we are. So even when you build a legacy, you know, you're building it for your own children. So with that being said, really, it's a, it becomes a challenge, especially to those who are not documented. But that's not limited to even those who are in South Africa, because there is overpopulation in South Africa. Um, you know, Johannesburg is a versatile city. Uh, I will talk about Johannesburg, where I stay, and as the heart of Africa. So it is a versatile city, um, of course, here and there, but it's not among the main factors causing people not to be employed, because a lot of people, they can speak English. You can see if you want to visit a Somalian tea shop, they will be like, oh, my friend, my friend. They have always, there is always a way to, to communicate. There is always a way to communicate. And people are living in groups, uh, for example, I'm from Zimbabwe, right? I can speak Sindewele, and which is one of the Ngoni languages, which is uh, among the Swati, uh, uh, you mean Kawasa, Zulu, and the stuff. So that much cannot be much of a, a problem. Hence, uh, when you are not learned, when you're not learned, and you really know that you can't even try to, to come up with something in English then perhaps, but always human beings find ways to come up with the plans. But mainly people, they come to South Africa for jobs, not uh, as refugees. Few come as refugees, those who seek Islam to stay, and those perhaps can be affected. But talk of people, you know, our cultures here in Africa, especially Southern Africa, they're almost the same, even our languages, they, they relate somewhere somehow. So such cannot be much of a problem, especially when you stay in the cities, unless when you stay in, down in rural KZN or Emakaya, but when you are in town, really, it's, it's something not to worry about. So as for me, I've been here for 12 years now, right? Mm. Yeah, really, there is this thing. Um, when, you know, I'm now more foreign in Zim than in South Africa. Uh, in in many ways, uh, you know, it, the languages, um, you know, the way we dress and everything. Because when you get to a place, you, you adopt. And when you go back, a lot of things will change. And when you speak, sometimes you speak unex, uh, unexcept, un, uh, without expecting, right? Then someone will, why are you talking like this, you know? Now you've forgotten how, how we speak. But you really, you really didn't even decide to say, okay, I will say this in this way. But, you know, they always think, oh, now you think you're now better, now superior because of this. But that's not the reality. It's just a matter of adoption and spending time in a certain environment. But um, on the other hand, um, it is also good for people back home to understand uh, why we are here. We are not here to be different from them, but we are here to, 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 to cause difference at home. Because we ran away, you know, on different reasons, some and chief among which is economic hardships. South Africa as a country, as a community, has its own budget for its citizens. And the, the jobs, thereof and the resources will be equal equivalent to the number because at some point i remember uh, during covid um, there was some points somehow an estimation of 65 million people living in south africa right where, where for south africa has got malawians tanzanians congolese and everything so now you realize that um 
the little that South Africa has budgeted, they set as a budget for their people. At some point now, they have to share. I'll just give a quick example, just for two seconds. Let's say you have got your own family, you've got your own children, you work and you earn a certain amount, and you know that per month I eat such such amount of groceries. Then boom, your cousin just comes and drops his children and is not even helping, giving you something as a lump sum to say support your children. Then if your children used to eat four slices of bread, are they gonna continue eating four slices of bread? No. Now they must share. So at some point it's uh, it can be true because as long as they are working, that means such jobs were supposed to be taken by if you're a migrant living in South Africa and maybe you came to South Africa um on on regard to, to, to or should I say in response to economic hardships because that's one thing that you know it is always good to work and remember that you have got a responsibility back home without thinking that you are not being loved in South Africa. So everyone is lovable until the resources are scarce. Due to scarcity of resources, people they start attacking each other. And so to avoid such things, let us love one another and live in peace. But let those who are still energetic and able to go back and knowing that they have got a responsibility to do. Let us work creating job and try by every means to be responsible citizens who are documented. Thank you.